sorry. It's alright, good time. Let's just get a little scan. Yeah, Lee, you're on film by the way, mate. Smile. Good time.
But after a while, I just got fed up, so I gave up. And then I drifted in and out with dead end jobs, which didn't pay out all that much. That's why I'm always on the scrounge. Hey, get this! Even sold me mountain bike to me grand for 25 quid. But I just spent the last of that down the arcade this afternoon. Hey, old mate! Boy, comes me mainly. He's a bit of a dick, but he's alright once you get to know him. You right, mate? Yeah. Where are you up to? Town. What are you going there for? Get some tickets for Oasis on Saturday. Oh, you must be joking, mate. They're like gold, does they? Nah, I know this guy at the stadium, he gets some dirt cheap. Well, get us one then. I'll pay you back in like two weeks or so. Get one for him. I've hardly got enough dots for one for myself. Anyway, you lend him money, you never get it back. He's alright though, mate. Went to see the school as me, but he was in first year when I was in fifth year. He was always bumming fags off me, even then. Hey, mate, you got fag? Nah, mate, I'm out. See what I mean? See you later, mate, forget that. Alright, see you in a bit. <coughs> Lee's got a job. Well, if you can call it a job. He collects glasses down at the coaching offices. Wait, does that what it feels like it though? You're right. Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, I'm just alone. Oh. Are you uh gonna come round my place later? Hello. My dude. I was waiting. Is he all right? Oh yeah, he's lovely. This is Anna. And as you can see, she's got a cracking little kid. Don't know who the father is though. I used to go out with her one time. Hey, it's not mine though. She's got a council flat too. It's not brilliant, but you know, it's somewhere to go. How are you, mate? You alright? Oh, I know, he stinks a bit, doesn't he? He doesn't. Oh, I think you best go home and change his nappy. Yeah, I suppose so. Don't want people thinking I can't look after him. So, uh, ah, oh, yeah. Gonna come round mine later. Don't know, I might be. I'm gonna see whether Lee's working first. Oh, he is later, but he's uh, gonna come out of mine first, so, um, are you gonna come? Dunno, I might be. Right, I'll see you then. See you later. She well fancies me, Anna. Quite fancy her and all. Anyway, I best be off home, because if I'm late for my tea, my mum says she'll sling it. She won't know, she'll just stick it in the oven, she always does. And I'll have to lend some money off me dad again tonight. I think he's getting a bit fed up with me asking for money all the time. Hey, he's still the footy's on, so he might just give me something to get out of the way. Hey, he might even give me the car. Because my mum's out with her mates tonight, you know, drinking. And well, she always gets a taxi back on her Thursday. Still, if she won't give me any, or my dad won't give me any, I'll just nick some off my little sister. She's got loads of money. Saves all the spends. Mind you, I'd have to be nice to her. But you know what little sisters are like? You get loads of pleasure from kicking them down the stairs, don't you? Anyway, see you in a bit. Great fun, that. Um, Rich. 
Then why did you get pregnant then? So you could have to get a job? Yeah, well, looking after Ryan's well worse than going out to work. <sighs> the sky bird like that, it's a wonder he ever gets fed. She never owned up to who the father was. I don't think she knows. She did see Nick for a bit, but I don't think he went near her like that, if you know what I mean. Still, I wouldn't say no. Come to think of it, I wouldn't say no to anyone. What are you smirking at? Nothing. Hey, you'll never guess what I've done. What? What have you done? It's outside. Ah, oh, don't see nothing. The escort muppet. Oh, what, that red one? You nicked it. Bloody hell. And where'd you get it? Town. Ah, oh, no one saw you. Nah, it was much too quick. It was parked down the side street. Dead easy to get in and hot wire. Oh, yeah. So what are you going to do with it now? Dunno. Dump it, I suppose. Alright, here's Nick. Uh, yes, my brother. Delivered him on a 
Yeah. I need to speak with him. Well, my mum's not in, but my dad is. Do you think I could have a word with him? Uh, yeah, uh, just a minute. Dad, there's a policeman at the door. He's <coughs>
I know, but uh, as we leave when you got to the hospital, I couldn't have gone through all that on my own. I really couldn't. <laughs> How do you think that went? Oh, swimmingly. You're going to say that though, aren't you? Yeah, of course I am. 
Well done, anyway. Do, do you want me to look at you or do I just look at Instagram? Look at the camera. Okay. Into camera, darling. Into okay, camera. okay. Is that okay? That's absolutely fine. Thanks. Bye. 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 Suzanne, what do you think? Hi, I thought it went very well. I thought Pete was the star of the show. Of as course. Always, and I was second star. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what do you think, mate? It's alright, apart from these projections were pretty rubbish and the little sound clip of um, whatever sound Oh, the called. early sound yeah. clip, yeah? Lee, what do you think, mate? Dreadful. Hey? Crap performances from Pete Corrigan, Absolutely. Paul Brennan, Vicky Myers, Sam Sanyo. <laughs> in fact, the whole cast. She's on there, she's on there, yeah. Not Luke. Luke, hey. any thoughts? Uh, smooth, it went smoothly. For your debut? Yeah. Exactly. Do you feel confident now for the next one? Definitely, and I won't almost walk off the wrong way like I just did. <laughs> okay. I thought it was alright too. Bit of feedback on the production there, Steve. First time you've seen it. First time I'm very impressed. Very impressed, uh, especially the punchline at the end. Uh, I thought that was the crux of the, uh, the whole programme, and I think that everybody was stunned to silence. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, and you're on. Brilliant production, really performance by everybody, all award winning. They should all be taken in at RADA and uh, international and national tours. Um, Thanks. <laughs> right, well, I've done you already. I'm eating. Sorry, go on. You, you, were, you were just halfway through your speech. Yeah, international and national tours, a few, you know, soon to be Oscar winners. Um, excellent job, sterling job done by all, I feel. And click your heels three times and shout out, there's no place like home, there's no place like home. I'll get you my pretty little dog too. <laughs> Bit of feedback, Emily, what do you think? Actually, I thought today you were the best I've ever seen you. Absolutely me? Just me? Marvelous. Well, no, the whole cast All right, was very good. good. Very good. Very emotive. Made my, made my tummy kind of uh, churn a little bit. Because um, it's very difficult for uh, Dominic to get hold of the audience right away. Um, because they don't know who he is. They wonder what's going to happen. Um, and it's uh, in half an hour he's got to get them on his side. So that they get the impact at the very end. So I thought, well done to everybody, especially yourself. Feedback on this morning's production? Absolutely, spot on. How did you feel, your big debut? Comfortable. I thought you did very well. Yeah, it was marvellous. You were very natural, and I, I looked to the audience, and everyone was grinning. Grinning well. When they saw you walk on, they all grinned, and went, oh, look, at, look who it is. Oh, well, well done. Thank you. So, generally, what did you think of the performance as a whole? Excellent. Very powerful. I think you got the message across. I think you did. Well done, sir. Hello. Emily Warner, I work for Greater Manchester Police. This afternoon uh, you are going to watch a play. The play is called Every Mother's Son. You will not have seen this play before. It is going to be performed uh, by players from NK Theatre Arts. NK Theatre Arts, that's right, isn't it? Sorry, my voice is going. Um, they're based in Romilly in Greater Manchester. The play will last for approximately 30 minutes. The play is about a tragic road accident. At the end of the play, Year 11 drama students will remain here, Year 10 drama students will remain here, and the rest of Year 10 will return to their sixth lesson, which I understand is maths. You may want to discuss further what you see and what you hear in the play. Please do that. Please do that with your members of staff, with yourselves, with anybody else. Um, there is a very strong message in the play. Please enjoy the play and you have to listen very carefully and watch very carefully. Thank you very much for your attention. And Mr. Just to be from the staff, can you please make sure all the bad phones are turned off? Thanks, Miss.
Martin went in morning, Clyde was forced to save four drivers from the wreckage of their stolen car, which had collided with the lamppost close to junction three of the M67. Source of Arthur Matthew Walker was rushed to hospital with a broken leg and had also sustained Two teenage victims of a road accident were so badly injured they had to be identified using police fingerprint records. The accident, a result of joyriding and stolen car, the Cruxel was turned into a chilling memorial yesterday for five teenage pals who died in a road smash. Dozens of bunches of flowers marked the spot where the stolen car they were driving hit a tree in Middleton Road at the corner. Like Metro, 16-year-old Matthew Cotton died instantly when the stolen car he was driving crashed into the central reservation of the M62. The car turned over as it spun into the opposite side of the motorway and was plowed into by an oncoming rear guy that had been thrown from his vehicle after being hit by a stolen car. Mr Cook from Ashton in Tameside was rushed to hospital but pronounced dead on the line. You're right. My name's Dominic Curran. Nick for short. I live at home with my mum, my dad, oh, and my little sister Rachel. Hey, I've just had my 18th birthday. And you know when you're 18, you expect to feel different, don't you? You know, an official adult and all that. You expect a pretty good present too. You've got to tell your mum and dad what you want, otherwise you'll just end up with some crap. Well, as I passed my driving test when I was 17, thought I'd ask for a car. Guess what I got? 20 quid. Yes, for a car and you get 20 quid. You can imagine how long that lasted, can't you? One night out on the town. These days, I'm always short of money. My mum and dad keep telling me to go and get a job and you should have tried harder at school and all that. Actually, I didn't really mind school. Only because we mates though. I never did any work. But I couldn't wait to leave. I always wanted to be a fireman, but they wouldn't have me till I was 18. So I thought I'd join the army, you know, to fill in the time like, but they wouldn't have me because I failed my maths exam. So, with the prospect of waiting two years before I could even apply to be a fireman, I had to get a job. My mum used to drive me down to the job centre, and every day it was the same old story. Sorry love, no jobs for you. I didn't mind going at first. Only because my mum used to take me over the road to the cafe. But after a while, I just got fed up. So I gave up. And then I drifted in and out of dead end jobs, which didn't pay out all that much. That's why I'm always on the scrounge. Hey, get this. Even sold me mountain bike to me grand for 25 quid. Well, I just spent the last of that down the arcade this afternoon. Hey, old Mick. Oh, here comes my mate, Lee. He's a bit of a dick, but he's all right once you get to know him. You right, mate? Yeah. Where you have to? Town. What are you going there for? Get some tickets for Oasis on Saturday. You must be joking, right? I feel like gold does them. Nah, I know this guy at the arena. He gets some dirt cheap. Well, get us one then. I'll give you the money back in like two weeks or something. Get one for him. I've hardly got enough dots for one for myself. Anyway, when you lend him money, you never get it back. It's alright though, Nick. Went to the same school as me. Though I was in fifth year when he was in first year. He was always scrounging fags off me even then. Hey Lee, you got a spare fag? See what I mean? Nah mate, I'm out. Catch you in a bit. Alright, see you in a bit. Lee's got a job. Well, if you can call it a job. He collects glasses down at the coaching horses. Only does that when he feels like it though. Alright, you Nick. You alright? Yeah. Where are you going? Aw, oh, I'm just a fool. Oh. Do you uh, want to come back to mine later? Don't know. Might do. <laughs> I was right in. Is he alright? Oh, yeah, he's lovely. <laughs> this is Anna, and as you can see, she has got a cracking little kid. Don't know who the father is, though. I used to go out with her at one time. Hey, it's not mine, though. She's got a council flat, too. It's not brilliant, but you know, it's somewhere to go. Are you alright, mate? Think of it, he doesn't. Oh, I think you best get home and change his nappy. Yeah, I suppose so. Don't people thinking I can't look after him, do I? <laughs> so, uh, are you? Gonna come back to mine later? But no, I might do. I'm gonna see whether Lee's working first. Uh, well, he is later, but he's gonna come back to mine first. So, uh, are you gonna come? I might do. But no. Right. Well, I'll see you then. Alright, see you in a bit. 
She well fancies me, Anna. Quite fancy her and all. Anyway, I best be off home, because if I'm late for me tea, my mum says she'll sling it. She won't though, she'll just stick it in the oven, she always does. Oh, and I'll have to lend some money off my dad again tonight. I think he's getting a bit fed up with me asking for money all the time. Hey, still the foot he's on, so he might just give me something to get out of the way. Hey, he might even give me the car, because mum's out with her mates tonight, you know, drinking. And uh, she always gets a taxi back on a Thursday. If not, I can always nick some off my little sister. She's got loads of money. Saves all her spends. Still, I'd have to be nice to her. Well, you know what little sisters are like, don't you? You get loads of pleasure from kicking them down the stairs. Anyway, see you in a bit. I told you, 
people at you. They're not going to get a bean. I don't even know what I'm doing here. You're all against me. Oh, I'm going to shit. What are you saying for? What are you doing? Mum, have you seen the coke on your Mars bar? No. Look, will you just ignore him when he's like this? Right, I'm going, it's shit here anyway. Hey. And don't forget your key, you might be, you might be better when you get back. And I'm coming back. Oh, Nick, please. Well, you just keep going, you've got to play, get yourself off. Yeah, I'll see you later. Have a good time, see you later. Don't worry about it. Rachel, see you later. Rachel, do you want to watch the rest of the film upstairs? The football's about to start. Right, okay.
John Mason's. Who the bloody hell is John Mason? Don't know, but he left his diary in the car. You nicked it! Why what? When you can drive? Oh, I indeed, so you know why I'm taking it. Where's your car? It's not my car. <laughs> right, you want to live to be grand then? Oh, yeah, I'll come. Oh, I'm not taking right at all. Oh, it's alright. I'll drop you around Tracy's next door. She can look after him for a bit. Alright then. Can you give me a lift to the cultures? Yeah, man.
That's why it's simple. I think I've got all the details around this floor. Can you read through it for me? So I it's all correct. <coughs> um, I am Peter Ian Curran. I live at 72 Smith Street, Smith Street Lochdale. Dominic Curran is my son. He was, he was born on the 23rd of July. Last time I saw Dominic alive was about 6:30 p.m. on Thursday, the 5th of April, at our home address. At 11:40 p.m. the same day, I attended Rochdale Infirmary and I identified Dominic. I identified Dominic's body to PC Stock. Oh, is that it? It's all correct. It's all correct. It's all we just had work. We wanted to go get the wife. She's on my own here and then. Let's go to the dog death and dog. So I'm going to tell you.
characters, but the story was based on a very real person, Damon Shepard, who lost his life because he didn't think of the consequences of his actions. My name is Anne Shepard, and I am Damon's mum. The only reason I agree for Damon's story to be told is in the hope that any one of you watching this play would have the strength and courage to say no to getting into a stolen car. The pain and heartache that Damon's death has caused the whole family is something I hope you and your family will never have to go through. Our lives will never be the same again because we have no Damon to share it with. Telling this story could prevent one of you from doing a similar thing, and Damon will not have died in vain. Thank you. When the world baby says goodnight, tell him all the time. Dad, show up, Dad. When he said it, dude. Goodnight, baby. Goodnight. No more's on the way. Goodnight, baby. Goodnight. Let's call it a day. Listen to the lullaby. Dad, you remember when Dad, um, someone said, Dad, shut up, Dad. Dad. Time for sleeps now. Oh, Paddle. Oh, Paddle. Oh, Paddle. Oh, Paddle. Oh, Paddle. Oh, Dad. Sam, Sam, Sam. 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 No, I said Sam. Good night, Sam and Mommy. I'm scratching my feet. I'm sorry. Let's call it a day. It's Sam for sleeps now. No, no, both of you. Sam, Sam. Sam. Dad. Mom, stop the camera. Okay. No, don't film me. Don't film me. Not on. Which bike is it? Yeah. I'm standing by. You've not got a picture.
Told you. Oh, oh, that's the back. Oh, oh, it's the front. This is the front, Sam. The last day. Dad, we're coming so like, I can get the laptop. Oh, come on. Well, do, I thought you wanted to go to the play area. Do you want to go to the play area, Beth? No, I don't do it. Beth? Sam. Oh, no, I'm dead. Play area. Do you want to go to the play area? It's... That's not it. Hey! What? Stop it! <laughs> 